The orange blocks were classic. Looks like somebody showed up in the first half while somebody was still stuck in last week trying to get it together to figure out exactly what it was that they needed to do in this game to make sure that they were going to be able to get out there and compete. And one thing I got to say is this. Some would say Jackson State wasn't really tested last week, while others would say, you know, South Carolina State just wasn't that good. But, guys, you know, Coach will go ahead and get on in this thing and talk about it because there's, there's a few things that I definitely saw in this game that leave me wondering, like, what in the world was going on until things really started, you know, I guess started clicking or I'm wondering did Coach Willie Simmons take his foot off the gas or, you know, just what was going on in this game. We're going to go ahead and talk about it right after this. What's your favorite coach back at it again? Ten toes down, I'm about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow League Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap in a friend or two and tell them to come on in. You know the positive vibes. We just have a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump on in this thing. Because I know you're like, Coach, what's going on? That's the million-dollar question I'm trying to figure out. What in the heck is going on? I mean, I put the barbecue out on the grill. I come back in the house. I'm watching Marcus Riley run up the field for six points on the opening kickoff. I'm like, wait a minute. Then Jack State get the ball. They drive down the field. And then you have a fumble on the snap. Now, I understand, you know, things happen in games. You know, folks playing a little tight or whatever have you. But in this game, I got to give kudos to FAMU because they definitely was more aggressive in this game in the beginning than what Jackson State was. It was almost as if everybody was just trying to figure it out. Like they was walking through the motions in this game. I'm like, guys, what are you doing? I'm like, there's a lot on the line here. I'm like, whoever wins this game nine times out of ten will end up coming out the East as the SWAC uh, – well, coming out the East as the SWAC division champion. And then they're going to play for the SWAC championship to see who's going to go to the Celebration Bowl. So, I mean, I'm just sitting here watching said, okay, let's see how this is going to turn out. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to sit back and go through all of it just to get a true understanding of exactly which way this thing is going to go. And I know in my prediction video yesterday, I know some of y'all was like, Coach, you done lost your mother-loving mind with this daggone prediction. And you know what? Hey, sometimes Coach get it wrong too, and I don't have no problem with that. But – I did say in the video that Jack State was going to win 30 to 17, but I also stated that we're going to find out exactly who's who today in this game. It's kind of like last week when everybody was talking about, you know, uh, South Carolina State versus uh, Jackson State. Well, no one knew what Jackson State was going to come out there on the field with, what they were going to do, any of that. They've seen a lot of film as far as with what South Carolina State had, and they was able to, you know, sit down and make adjustments as far as what they need to do. No problem with that. But I also stated in this game that there's going to come a time where coaches are going to have to make the adjustments on the fly, and let's see who's going to be able to make those adjustments. Okay, Jack State made the adjustments in the second half. They was already down, what, 28? Was it 28 to nothing at the halftime? And I'm sitting scratching my head like, wait a minute, what guys, what are y'all doing? I mean, you had too many, too many people out there on the field that was just out of position. It was almost like everybody was out there trying to do more than what they needed to do instead of just playing as a unit. You got defensive backs where you watching Sherrod. He's running up and down the Dago field, running routes. I mean, it was times where he was just uncovered. I mean, and if Musa would have connected on a couple of them passes, that game should have been worse than 28 to 10. I'm just going to be honest with you. I, I never expected to see that happen, but you know what? Sometimes it does. And I'm just going to say, fam, you looked a lot more physical on both the offensive and defensive side of the ball. And I stated also in the, in the um, prediction, whoever plays on the other team's side of the ball was going to win this game. That is that is exactly what FAMU did in the first half. In the second half, Jackson State started to get things a little, you know, get things rolling just a little bit where it was like, okay, you didn't smack me in my mouth. Now it's time for me to go ahead and wipe, you know, let, let, me, let me wipe it off a little bit. Let me go ahead and get back in this thing. You got my attention now. And by the time they got their attention, guess what? You're already in a big hole. So if you didn't play a picture-perfect second half, there was no way in the world that they're going to make a run to come back and you know, kick, you know, come come back and kick, cut down that 28 point lead. Not only that, but then your quarterback, your quarterback gets hurt. So I don't know exactly how bad this young man is hurt, how bad his hand is hurt. I, you know, I give him props for trying to tough it out, you know, salute to him. But um, that's, I mean, it, it's, I guess we could say this is a part of the game where, you know, you got some, sometimes you got athletes that get injured. Seen a couple of athletes that went down. I don't know if it was due to hydration or what, but 
it's just when you really look at everything that's going, everything that went on in this game, you just ask yourself the question, okay, what what's really going on here? You know, are we, and I'm sure a lot of you today are going to be sitting back looking, you know, looking to get answers to that because I'm sure folks are going to say, well, hey, um, Jackson State is not as good as advertised. You know, FAMU was just a better team. FAMU was a better team in this game. But there was some there was some things here and there that, you know, made you scratch your head and wonder, like, okay, what's going on? I mean, like I said, Jackson State had a lot of self-inflicted wounds that cost them this game. And not only that, but like I stated before, FAMU just came out there and just said, hey, we kicking y'all ass today. Excuse my excuse my vernacular one more time. They're just like, we just going to kick y'all behind. We're going to let y'all know what time it is because enough is enough. And you got to give them their props on that. Like I said, Willie Simmons and this coaching staff, they definitely show how they show how to put their athletes in the right position to make sure they got maximum effort out of everybody out there on the field. They definitely have speed out there on the field. That's going to be a problem for a lot of these teams in the SWAT because a lot of these teams, will, it's going to be a problem for a lot of teams in general because there's teams out here that just does not have the type of speed. Not with those receivers, and not only that, but those uh, even with those linemen out there that was just flat out just playing some daggone bully ball in the beginning. Again, every week you have to come in there with that same type of intensity as far as what you did last week, and you got 24 hours to play with that, and then that's gone. It's time to focus on what we need to focus on and get back to the main thing. In this game, looking at how the game went last year, I'm not going to tell you no tale. I was expecting for family to come out there and put a 50 piece up on Jackson State because when they got up 28 to nothing, I said, oh, I want to see if head coach Willie Simmons and his coaching staff going to mash the gas to go ahead and drop another 28 in the second half to at least put this at 56. Now, if they get there and put, you know, 60 plus, they'll say, okay, they really letting them know how pissed off they was last season getting that 59 put on them because that 59 should have been a 70 burger. I'm just going to be real with you and just say that because I know you're like, coach, come on now. Listen, I, all I'm saying is this, sitting there watching this game, I just – it left me wondering a lot of things. Even, you know, even though Jack State went out there, they played the way that they did. But even with FAMU, I'm still looking like, okay, they 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 have raised the bar a little bit, but there's still some inconsistencies there that we do see in the game. So, I mean, if you're going to call it one way, you got to call it the other way. I'm just being real with you. I'm giving FAMU their props, but you also have to look at as, you have to look at everything as a whole. And not only that, but FAMU running, run, uh, running back room, oh, my God, you had – Yant, Jennings, Will Hoyt, and who else? Uh, Dean. They all got out there and rushed for, what, 207 yards total? And that's including uh, Musa running the ball and Shared. Shared. I'm like, come on. Th this is going to be something special to watch with this FAMU team this Brown year. Brown got injured in the game in which McDonald, uh, Zion McDonald had to come in for him. He led the team. He led Jack State down the field to put up 10 points in the second half. Uh, McDonald threw the ball 14 times, completing 10 for 149 yards, one touchdown. Brown both were sacked two times. Uh, Brown threw the ball 19 times, completing 10 for with 82 yards. He, and like I said before, he was sacked also two times in the game. So, uh, FAMU had four sacks on Jackson State, and I believe Jackson State had one sack on Musa. In which Musa got out there, he he did his thing as well. He threw the ball 22 times, completing 12 for 150 yards, two touchdowns. Now. Shared and uh, Riley went out there and let everybody know, hey, listen, they got some speed that's going to hurt you. And trust me, if you guys are not paying attention and don't keep those young men from getting off them edge, getting on them edges, is, is lights out. Hey, Busters, the big sexies up front, salute to them fellas up there because they definitely got out there and they bought out. They, they, they bought into what needed to be done and they got after it. I mean, there was a lot of pancaking going on out there. I mean... <laughs> Like I said before, I, I was not expect I was expecting a better game than what happened. Um, looking at Jack State get pushed around like that in the first half just left me with my mouth dropped. Like, what in the world is going on here? I mean, we, we got to be honest with it, guys. I'm hoping this week you, you guys play Southern this week. I'm hoping everybody go take a hard look in the mirror and understand what needs to be done, make the necessary adjustments, get back focused, and handle business. Like I said, this one is done. It's time to move forward and do what you got to do. Family is playing the University of South Florida this week, so we're going to see what they do against them as well. Like I said, those fam, you can get out there and really get after it this season, you know, letting everybody know that they, they are for real. So we're going to sit back and relax. We're going to watch and see how this is going to go, uh, see how everything plays out. And like I said before, we saw some great ball uh, in this game. I mean, I know a lot of fans, you know, fans for Jack State, they want to see Jack State continue on going undefeated. 
uh, until they until next week when they play Southern and see you know what they're gonna do that, do then. And FAMU fans, they are excited that FAMU was finally able to get that win against Jackson State in the Orange Blossom Classic, in which you know now's their time. So we're gonna see exactly how all of this goes. But guys, like I said, y'all make sure y'all tune in, tap in, tell a friend of friend to come on in. It's nothing but positive vibes. But guys, coach gonna go ahead and get up on out this thing. But until next time, be the one and lead.